In the headlines, another bomb scare in Kaduna as residents are abducted in fresh attack. Nigeria's Security and Civil Defense Corps arrests seven suspects for theft and vandalism of electrical cables and railway tracks. Court of Appeal of Turn Sacking of Obongi State's Governor. And on the foreign scene, Zelensky warns Russian forces regrouping to attack South and Dumbas region as UN warns number of refugees crosses a full million. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. <music> Now the news in detail. Residents of Shanono in Shanono local government area of Kaduna state discovered another improvised explosive device, IED, on Friday. The device is detected in 24 hours after an IED can concealed in a bucket was found. And spokesman of the State Police Command, ASP Mohammed Daligi, confirmed the discovery, saying anti-bomb squad team were mobilized to the area. Friday's object is discovered in a jerry can covered with a black nylon. Meanwhile, one bandit was killed during the invasion of Ongwerbulus and Ongwergimbia communities in Chikun local government area of Kaduna State on Thursday. Reports say three residents were also killed during the invasion, which occurred around 8 p.m. Residents say they heard gunshots that lasted for hours, forcing many of them to flee. The Imo State Police Command has said that its operative has repelled an attack on the Mbiri Police Division in Mbatoli local government area by gunmen suspected to be members of the Eastern Security Network, a military arm of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, in the early hours of Friday. Confirming this in a press statement, the Public Relations Officer of the Imo State Police Command, Mike Abatam, said the hoodlums who came in their numbers threw improvised explosive devices into the station and shot sporadically. He added that the IEDs and gunshots affected some vehicles packed within the premises and shattered roof and windows within the police premises. Abadam explained that police operatives attached to the division also engaged the hoodlums, forcing them to retreat in panic. The police spokesman for the stated that investigations are ongoing and efforts are being made to arrest the fleeing hoodlums. And in our number of states, Governor Chukuma Soludo has urged security agencies to go after criminals and intensify security to protect lives and protect the people's property in the state. Governor Soludo made the call at Newi South, the local government area of Secretariat attached, attacked rather by arsonists on Wednesday night. The governor inspected the building set ablaze by hoodlums, which include works department, education building, traditional council office, public complaints commission office, and property department office. Soludo, who is accompanied by the state commission of police, Etcheng Etcheng, and other heads of security agencies condemned the attack, describing it as mindless and very unfortunate. And in another development, the United Kingdom has warned against travels to seven states in the north following the rising spate of insecurity in Nigeria. And according to a travel advisory on the Foreign Com Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, website, the affected states are Bernou, Yobe, Adamawa, Gwambe, Kaduna, Katsina, and Zampara. It further warned that there is a threat from extremists linked to Boko Haram or the Islamic State of West Africa a province in Bernou, Yobe, and Adamawa state. And the travel advisory called on those working in the northeast to be fully confident in their employer's ability to extract them from the region in the event of any emergency. And now if we move to Bornu State, where the command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has arrested seven suspects involved in theft and vandalism. Parading the suspect before newsmen at the Civil Defense Headquarters in Meiduguri, the state's commandant, uh, whose name is Musa Farouk, said that the suspects were arrested for vandalizing electrical cables and railway tracks. 
Farouk added that its patrol operatives also recovered PMS from the suspects. On the 28th March 2022, at about 0930 hours, we arrested one Sanda Ali, a male, 15 years, Mohamed Baba Mustafa, a male, 17 years old, Gaji Kachala, a driver to a golf saloon car, with which they conveyed several railway assets. For instance, irons, 60 pieces of railway irons, 7 pieces of railway slippers. This act, you all agree with me, offends the spirit of Nigerian economy. These guys are saboteurs and they'll be treated within the framework of justice. May I sound warning to all the criminal elements involved in vandalism of government assets and infrastructure that we will pursue them until the end is put off. We will not tolerate the continuous vandalism of our governmental assets, particularly in Brunei State, that has been devastated over time as a result of insurgency. In the aspects of electricity, the good people of Canberra now have been put into darkness for over 12 years now. And elsewhere, a lecturer of political and international relations in the University of Abuja, Professor Sharif Ghali, says strengthening cooperation in the areas of peace and security with China will prevent a recurrence of attacks on the railways. Gali said this while speaking to journalists on the sidelines of a seminar on promoting win-win cooperation and building better friendship, organized by China Alumni Association in Nigeria. Gali said as long-standing friends, China, through its Belt and Road Initiative, has made several infrastructure investments in Nigeria, including the railway system, which should be protected for sustainability. The President, China Alumni Association of Nigeria, Khan Mohammed Suleiman, said the event was organized to better enlighten Nigerians on the relations between Nigeria and China. More collaboration must be cemented, you know, in the area of peace and security because His Excellency Ambassador Sui Jenchun had actually proposed in his uh, goals, you know, in this particular uh, collaboration, that is military collaboration. Military collaboration introducing new instrument equipment, military equipment to Nigeria, introducing uh, intelligence sharing, you know, between Nigeria and China, as well as new technologies. So this should be done in our you know defense sector as well as businesses what essentially we have looked at uh, the ways our uh, relationships have been so the china nigeria relations we want like say to go beyond what this government to government and now also to people to people there are advantages out there that uh, the ordinary nigerian is supposed to take but knowing that uh, nobody has been talking about this publicly and then uh, it's just like to say the extension because what it means is that if we say Belt and Road Initiative, what does it mean? So people really need to know. Forum on China and Africa Cooperation, what does it mean really? So if people don't know this, so there is nothing like uh, you achieving anything necessarily. So This new initiative, we strongly advocate that harmony in coexistence, harmony in integration, harmony in diversity, harmony in development, at the higher level, we promote peace and uh, consonance between our countries through excellent uh, governance. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up after the break. We'll take a look at how a university graduate turned a vulcanizer. This and many more shortly. Do stay with us. <music>
welcome back. You're still watching a news update on Trust Television. And before we move on to other stories, let's take a look at our top headlines again. We told you that the president of Sh the residents rather of Shinono in Shinono local government area of Kaduna State um, witnessed another explosion barely 24 hours after an IED concealed in a bucket was found. And Borno State Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has arrested seven suspects involving theft and vandalism of electrical cables and railway tracks. And moving on to more news, uh, several laborers have feared killed while others have been trapped as a one-story building collapsed in Jalingo, the Tarabu state's capital, on Friday. Daily Trust gathered that the building, which is on the construction, collapsed while many laborers were working. The building, located close to the Tarabu state's polytechnic, Jalingo, is said to be owned by a popular building material dealer. Relatives of the laborers were said to have staged a protest over the incident, and Daily Trust finding revealed that the lack of rescue equipment is hampering rescue efforts as the operation is being carried out by the local community. Police spokesperson DSP Usman Abdullahi confirmed the incident and said three dead bodies were removed from the collapse building while many laborers remain trapped. And as part of efforts to promote transparency and accountability in government businesses, Center for Physical Transparency and Integrity Watch presents its Transparency and Integrity Index Methodology Handbook. This follows the need for further guardians of most ministries, departments and agencies on the methodology and timely implementation of the 2021 Transparency and Integrity Index a pioneer project the center had earlier launched. Trust TV's Aisha Sali has more details. Technology-driven solutions are now being deployed to monitor public sector expenditures, strengthen public sector integrity mechanisms, and promote accountability. In strengthening Nigeria's anti-corruption architecture by supporting criminal justice reform and implementation of enabling policies, programs and laws, the Center for Fiscal Transparency and Integrity Watch launches a methodology handbook on transparency and integrity index used to checkmate activities of the public sector. You know, we have a problem of corruption in Nigeria and every election cycle comes and people talk about corruption. And we'll find out that it's actually much more expensive to combat corruption after the deed has occurred. So what we try to do is to ensure that one of the indicators of combating corruption is a prevention arm. And the prevention arm entails where you, people are more transparent. I'm talking about agencies now, ministries, departments and agencies where they are more transparent. You find that, that the corruption reduces. So our little assessment of countries that are more developed than Nigeria is that their democracies are deeper because there's more transparency in public finance. So that is why we did this initiative to uh, encourage MDAs, especially as and state governors, state governments and local governments to ensure they are transparent, especially with regards to public finance and other aspects of corruption. The assessment handbook is expected to guide ministries, departments and agencies to promote transparency and integrity mechanisms deployed in the public sector using five variables and 31 sub-variables to assess the availability of information on public institutions' websites at all levels. We are trying to encourage MDEs just to be more transparent. Nobody is going to antagonize anybody as they are more transparent with their information. Citizens will know well, those that are doing well and those that are not doing well will be encouraged to do well next time. The initiative by the center contributes to Nigeria's goal of reducing corruption by supporting Nigerian-led efforts that strengthen accountability, transparency, and participation. Aisha Salehu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And moving on, Adam Husseini graduated from University of Jazz, but instead of waiting for a white-collar job, he took vulcanizing to make ends meet. Operating at Lion Sediki Street of Jaws North Local Government Area of Plateau State, Husseini explains why he remains a vulcanizer despite being a university graduate. Let's take a look. Husseini said he started learning the job from his father during his childhood and was subsequently settled by his father and given the go-ahead to start on his own. 
He said apart from sponsoring his university education, the business has been helping him to support his family. I started learning this before I even graduated, okay? I can even say that I inherited the work from my father, okay? So I started learning it when I was just like a kid, okay? So I developed my passion in it since I grew up with it and I use it to sponsor my education. I have younger ones, but I'm still supporting. Okay, this education, I'm hearing this. Because my father is of age now. According to him, after staying for more than a decade in the job, he developed passion for it and believed that vulcanizing would help him in life. And while he continues to remain in the job even after graduation, Hussein he said being a graduate didn't mean one cannot engage in smaller businesses like vulcanizing, adding that these days being a graduate does not mean making it in life. That era, all that time was already gone. It was in those days that as soon as you graduate, you shall learn. It's just like a kind of happy automatic job for employment. They're all like these days. Things have changed. So you need to have a second thought. We need to sit ourselves down and tell ourselves the truth. That please and please now, don't look down on any work or any menial job. Please start doing something. Start from somewhere before you get to somewhere. He, however, called on Nigerian youths, especially graduates, to engage in any business that can sustain their lives since getting a white-collar job is becoming increasingly difficult in the country. And the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has engaged relevant stakeholders in validation meeting of nutrition guidelines to improve the national school feeding program. The National Coordinator, National Social Investment Program, NSIP, of the Ministry, Omar Bendir, said the aim was to have a globally accepted document. In her remarks, the Minister, Sadia Umar Farouk, said the school feeding program started in 2016 and was being implemented in 35 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. By Elsa, the only state yet to implement the program, we have now developed has expressed uh, a nutritional guideline uh, with the help of the Nutritional Society of Nigeria. So it's all not just local content, it's totally local on how do we do things, how do we train our cooks, how do we feed our children, what kind of foods can make up the menus of our local food materials. We worked very hard for nearly two years to develop this uh, uh, um, standard institutionalized document and we are here to validate it. As we know, some of the objectives of the school feeding program is to boost enrollment, attendance of pupils, and also boost the nutrition status of those children in those schools. This nutrition status is one of the most important components or objective of the program, and this is what brought about development of these nutrition guidelines that we're here today to validate. The nutrition guidelines development became so important to us because, as you know, the state government develops a menu working with the state nutrition officers of those states. The menus have to reflect what 80% of that menu has to reflect what's readily available within that state. A child that is hungry cannot perform complex tasks like arithmetic and mathematics in school. If we have poor attention in class, you know, so we can name and go on and go on like that. It increases their performance because of, you know, being attentive in class, reducing school absent absenteeism, reducing frequent illnesses, when a child does not feed well, we know what results we are going to have, malnutrition. And to legal matters, the Court of Appeals sitting in Enugu on Friday upheld the February 28th decision of Abakiliki High Court bordering on the defections of Governor David Omahi and his deputy Kelechi Igwe from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress, APC. In a 37 judgment read on the floor of the court, Justice Balugori held that the appeal lacked merit, adding that the cases cited are totally irrelevant to the matter brought before the court. The lead judge, Justice Balugori, further pointed out that the removal of elected officials in the case 
Governor Umahi and his deputy lies in the hands of the legislature and must be in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. The judge specifically cited Section 308 of the Constitution and pointed out that no legal action can be taken against a sitting president and vice president, governor and his deputy. He therefore dismissed the appeal with a 200,000 naira fine against the defendant. And in another development, factional crisis rocking the All Progressive Congress in Zambara State has taken another dimension as Senator Kabiru Marafa led faction accused the party of unfair treatment to members. Marafa told journalists while removing APC billboards and posters from the factional secretariat in Gosaudat, his faction awaits judicial pronouncement on the crisis. The report. Senator Kabiru Marafa says that the All Progressive Congress APC has offended the people of Zamfara State, prompting his fraction to remove the party symbols and billboards. He says they remain in the APC to prove a point to certain individuals that former Governor Abdulaziz Yari and Senator Kabir Marafa led fractions are bona fide members of the party, contrary to the lies being sprayed that they are not genuine members of the APC. APC has not been just unfair to the people of Zamfara State. I can tell you. That. Okay? So if the people of the Amfara State wake up today and uh, clean or erase APC in all their houses, I think they have done uh, the right thing. The only reason why we remain in APC, like I said in my speech, is to prove some points. One of them, some of them are going about lying to people that we are not members of APC. We challenge them on national television. Send us out if you fit. We built APC. Nobody. APC didn't build us. Senator Marafa disclosed that APC has more than 260 cases pending in court, and he believes that one of the cases will see the light of the day at the Supreme Court. And on the international scene, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday said the situation in the south and the Donbass region remained extremely difficult and reiterated that Russia is building up forces near the besieged city of Maripol, adding that they still need to go down a very difficult path to get everything they want. The United Nations says the number of Ukrainian refugees fleeing Russia's war in their country has crossed 4.1 million, adding that the tragedy must stop. Reports say that women and children accounts for 90% of those who have fled. Half of those are children. Ukrainian men aged 18 to 60 are eligible for military call-up and cannot leave. UNICEF says more than half of the country's estimated 7.5 million children have been displaced and 2.5 million internally and two million abroad. And with that, we wrap up the news update at this hour. For more updates, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.